Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is the first episode of the story, where things go wrong during the last Sasuke retrieval mission, and Naruto is blamed. Tired of everything being his fault, he creates a new way of thinking that contradicts every belief he once held. The issue is that not everyone appears to be thrilled with the change. To show your support, like and subscribe. Let's get this show going, traveling in order to encounter Kabuto at the Heaven and Earth Bridge was Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, member of Anbu Yamato and Sai, member of the Anbu route. The group was approximately 10 miles away from their destination, so Yamato decided that the group should set camp, because the sky was getting darker by the minute. Once achieved the group's consent, Yamato performed some hand seals and a wood house emerged from the ground that served as a base camp for the group to plan the mission at the very last detail. Once every one of the group had settled, Yamato gathered everyone and went to the details of the mission. So, from the report that Tsunade Sama handed to me, we are to meet Kabuto at the Heaven and Earth Bridge in a couple's days time, says Yamato, showing to the group, the area map and a file regarding Kabuto's data. Sakura, why don't you tell me exactly how Sasori is? and give me everything you know, because if we are to succeed this mission, I need to make a perfect henge technique of sorcery. Once Sakura gave a precise report regarding the Red Scorpion sorcery, Yamato started to tell his plan, regarding the mission, as you all know, the plan is the following, I am going to perform a henge technique and disguise in sorcery in order to abduct Kabuto, hopefully, without any need of battle. You three will hide yourselves and your chakra so that he can't be suspicious of the trap. In case I fail to abduct him. I am to give you three a signal in order to disable Kabuto quickly as possible. Agreed? After a huge high was heard, all went to sleep in order to get ready for the mission in two days. Little did they know that they would have an unexpected visit for none other than the snake Sanin. Mission date When the mission date arrived, Sasori, Yamato in disguise, and Kabuto met in the middle of the bridge, with three Konoha ninjas hiding in a safe distance as to not blow Yamato's cover and ruin the mission. Also, looking up and with a very scary expression, shows Orochimaru, Analyzing the situation and already noticed the three teenage ninjas hidden. All of a sudden, Orochimaru showed up behind Kabuto, with his body surrounded by snakes. Do I smell treason, Kabuto? Dash Orochimaru said with a grin. Orochimaru-sama? Were you following me? Dash Kabuto answered with apparent surprise in his face. Then Kabuto showed his devotion to the snake Sanin and revealed his plan to kill Sasori, hence Jamato, with his technique Chakas Galpal, for a bunch of broken wood starts flying destroying the Makutan henge technique and showing a surprise Yamato. Once the signal was sent, three Konoha ninjas appeared from their hiding positions, only for Orochimaru tell that he already sensed them before, and knew of the group's intentions, regarding Kabuto. Haruno Sakura and Sai were focused on the enemy, but Naruto, only by looking at the responsible for Sasuke leaving Konoha in order to obtain power, became angry at a point that his eyes burned red, his hair, fingernails and teeth changed in a way never seen before as well as tails appearing, one by one. When the third tail appeared, a red aura emanated from Naruto could be sensed by the entire forest, scaring both Sakura and Sai, since they were clueless of what was happening to his teammate. Yamato figured this out, and quickly told to both, that's Kyuubi's chakra, not Naruto's, which resulted in a more scared expression of Sakura. Once the four tail appeared, Naruto transformed into a little Kyuubi with four tails and red skin now recognizable by no one and set to charge Orochimaru, who cursed Naruto for his lack of skill, since he resorted to the Kyuubi's chakra. Pitiful child, resorting to Kyuubi all the time. All that Naruto could say was groan at anything, since he is now being controlled by the nine-tailed beast. After a monster-like fight between Orochimaru and Mini Kyuubi and the entire destruction of the area, Orochimaru and Kabuto escaped and Yamato had to stay doing his Makutan technique in order to calm the Kyuubi's chakra and save Naruto cursing him for resorting to Kyuubi's chakra without any need for it. Once Yamato saved Naruto, the group, now without Sai since he escaped with Orochimaru in order to fulfill his secret mission given by Dansu, leader of Root, started to chase Orochimaru, until they reached his hideout. By performing a Dodan technique, the three group members infiltrated the hideout. Once inside, they managed to find Sai in his secret mission, only for him to say that since they found out his mission, he failed this mission. After a search throughout the hideout, the now entire group found Uchiha Sasuke and engaged him in battle. Then from out of nowhere, Sasuke showed the results of his training and appeared in front of Naruto, with his sword in his hand, ready to stab Naruto's back and saying, You shouldn't come here, Naruto, I told you already you do not stand a chance against me. You are too much of a knucklehead to ever win a fight against anyone with at least low chunin level. 
laughed Sasuke. Shut up you teen, barked Naruto, infuriated with the adjective knucklehead. Sai managed to stop Sasuke's blade with his own, only for Sasuke laugh and use his new technique called Chidori Nagashi and blasted everyone with electricity current. After, Sasuke escaped with Orochimaru and Kabuto, resulting the mission to fail and for the group to report to Tsunade-sama, the god I'm Hokage of Konoha Hidden Village. On the way back, Yamato argued with Naruto, Naruto, why would you channel Takubi's chakra before? Because of that, this mission failed and you are to be held responsible for it. If only you tried to think once in your life, you would not make as many bad decisions as you make. Sorry Yamato-sensei, I was careless. But all Naruto could think is, why everyone underestimates me? Why everyone call me knucklehead? Why, Sakurakan is blaming me as well for failing the mission? Naruto then looked at Sakura, who was giving him an evil glare, reached him and started vomiting angry words at Naruto. Why Naruto? Don't you want to rescue Sasuke? You've made a promise to me, you know? Why you screw up all the time, knucklehead? Naruto, when hearing that nickname, became very angry at her. In fact that nickname he has been hearing every time since he graduated from the academy. Sakura's curse at Naruto was the last one needed for him to get furious in the worst possible level. He knew it was time to change the way the population of Konoha and foreigners think about Uzumaki Naruto. Once near the village, Naruto knew one thing never again will people underestimate me. A couple days after the mission, the group was standing beside the god Daim, giving the report of the mission that was a complete failure. So, Yamato report on your mission ordered Tsunade. Hi Tsunade-sama. As planned, I hedged and Isasori and encountered Kabuto at the designated area. However we had an unexpected visit from Orochimaru that happened to plot an assassination of the Akatsuki member with the help of Kabuto, Naruto, after hearing about Sasuke from Orochimaru became angry, channeling the power of the QB4 tails and turned to fight Orochimaru and Kabuto at the same time. After that, Orochimaru and Kabuto escaped. I managed to turn Naruto back into his form with Makuten Jutsu and Sakura healed his burned body. After following Orochimaru and Kabuto's trace we managed to find their hideout and we came face to face with Sasuke. Once Naruto and him were neck to neck, being tired because of the Kyuubi's transformation, Naruto didn't have time to rest, failing to capture him and they escaped, explained Yamato, finishing his report. Tsunade noticed evil glares from Yamato and Sakura towards Naruto, which came as a surprise to her so she bothered to give the blonde shinobi the right to verify the story said by Yamato. The story is true, said Naruto, never losing his new serious posture, which once again appeared strange to the blonde Hokage, since she expected him to be either screaming his lungs on his behalf or becoming angry at them for implying that it was his fault the mission failed. Tsunade actually was a little drunk, so just to play with the blonde, she aimed a chakra-enhanced punch directly on his face. She would not hit him with it. In fact she would stop her arm really close to his nose. When the fist approached, Tsunade noticed that Naruto did not even bother to defend himself or even showed any side of fear for the upcoming blow. When she stopped the punch inches from Naruto's face, she, as intrigued as she was, turned to ask why. Why you didn't defend yourself? My fist could make quite damage on your skull. Now, she was more than ever worried about her surrogate family's sanity, since the old one would close his eyes and be frightened, just waiting for the blow. It's because I admit my failure and I deserve to be punished, Hokage-sama. The entire mission was a failure and it was because of my stupidity and harsh thinking, therefore I am to hold responsible for the failure of the mission," said Naruto, earning glances from everyone. Sakura and Yamato, even though were very mad at Naruto, never passed though their heads that Naruto would admit that he was wrong, or even be held responsible for the failure of the mission. Tsunade and Shizune were trying to look for any kind of emotion through Naruto's eyes, but couldn't find anyone, it was like he was admitting defeat. Sai was as stoic and emotionless as ever. But Tsunade, somehow, knew, after looking further, that Naruto wasn't giving up at all, that look on his eyes was almost the same as his father, when serious. This Naruto was frightening her to no end. She never thought she would be scared of Naruto, but now it looks like he suffered an extreme transformation or Minato took over his body. But since the report was over, Tsunade dismissed everyone. So Yamato and Sai sunshined out of the room, while Sakura went for the door and never looked back. After some time, Naruto requested to speak to Tsunade in private, and she agreed. So, Naruto, what would you like to talk to me about and be quick? Now this was a new thing. Normally, Tsunade would already know what Naruto wanted to talk about, since usually was about new missions and complaints about the teammates that he was to be grouped with, 
But now she couldn't anticipate what he was about to talk about and she feared that it could be something serious. Actually, Hagek sama I noticed that the Chunin exams will be in two weeks from now, so I would like a two-week training period in order to take the exams and finally advance to Chunin? Dash said Naruto, earning surprising glances from Tsunade, since A, Naruto wasn't calling her Bakken but now Hokage-sama and B, she totally forgot about the Chunin exams. Naruto, I Naruto didn't wait for Tsunade to answer, and requested another favor. Also, I would like those chakra elemental papers, so I can know which chakra element I'm most suited for in order to start my training but, Naruto, what about Team Kakashi? They will need you with them on future missions. Said Tsunade trying to convince him to not do the Chunin exams and proceed with Sakura and Yamato or Kakashi who by this time was already recovered. They can very well take care of each other, and, as they said, all I ever do is mess things up, anyway. Said Naruto, in a calm manner trying to hide his utter frustration with the so-called teammates of his and the fact that they always underestimate him. Okay, Naruto, I will grant your wish, but we have to talk with Kakashi about it. He will be crushed when you tell him about it. Naruto, knowing that Kakashi was actually hearing the whole conversation, since not only he sensed his chakra signature but also spotted a shadow with spike hair, near one of the windows outside the Hokage's office, showed a little grin and calmly stated. Don't worry about that Hokage-sama. I am sure he already knows. I'll see you in a couple weeks time at the Chunin exams, until then take care of yourself." Said Naruto and walked calmly to the door and left the office. Okay. Said Tsunade, still dumbstruck from seeing the blonde's new behavior, but she was wondering how Naruto knew that Kakashi was already listening to the whole conversation from outside the room. Actually Jiraiya was a master in sensing other people's chakra signatures from far away so she guessed that he taught Naruto that ability up to a kin level with his own. After that, Naruto vanished from sight and Kakashi appeared from the window, as he was hearing everything. He was wondering what the hell happened that made everyone blame Naruto for what happened. Sure Naruto weren't the brightest mind of the rookie nine but to an extent to blame him. But what puzzled him to no end, was Naruto himself and his sudden change and also the fact that Naruto took charge and the responsibility for what happened. Kakashi actually was glad of Naruto's antics, since it reminded him so much of his sensei. As Kakashi just entered the room. Naruto collected the chakra elemental papers and stored him inside his pocket, while walking towards the administration building's exit, when Shizun called him so as to have a little conversation and try to understand her surrogate little brother and what's going on with him that resulted in his change of behavior. Shizun was sad at seeing the seriousness in Naruto's face just as Kakashi was. From her part, Naruto's happiness and behavior just happened to bring out the best in people and she was very well proud of her little brother for that part, but now she was scared of what he could be thinking. Naruto-kun, wait up, I want to talk to you a little bit, if that's okay with you? Dash asked Shizun seeing Naruto's back with his hands inside his pockets, slowly turning himself to watch his sister, while demonstrating a look of total apathy and indifference, much to Shizun's dismay and sadness. What do you need, Shizhniniakun? Dash answered Naruto with very little concern in his voice. Naruto-kun, why are you like this? This look of yours doesn't suit you at all. Is there something wrong with you? It's okay. You can talk to me, after all you're like a little brother to me." Dash smiled warmly Shizun, a little relieved after receiving a smile from Naruto as well. Don't need to worry about me Shizhnini Ekin, it's just a little realization on my part that now it hit me worse in my face than Tsunadazama's chakra enhanced punches. Said Naruto, who even though showed care to his sister, answered with little bit of emotion. At this, Shizun was caught staring hardly at her brother for what he said. First of all because of how profound he seemed and second was that he once remarked the Hokage as an old lady and now he calls her Tsunadazama or Hokage-sama, even though they weren't at the presence of such person. What could it be, Naruto can the change that happiness in you that always seemed to cheer everyone up? Where is the old Naruto who could very well change everything bad to good just with his presence? Dash asked Shizun, wondering just where that Naruto was hiding and actually considering that this one wasn't the Naruto she came to know, which in fact it wasn't. I'll tell you Shizhniniakin. It's because of the fact that no one I know thinks of me as a good shinobi or even good at something. For everyone, I'm the dobi, the dead last, the idiot, the pathetic excuse of a shinobi. If you have one more, why not add to that list, while we're talking about it. I'm just sick and tired of being underestimated of my abilities and even though that perverted of Asanin didn't teach me shit, I'm going to train all by myself." Dash said Naruto, while Shizun was displaying looks of sadness, anger and disappointment. 
sadness was from seeing the one never-ending happiness and stamina freak show his true emotions for the first time as well as acknowledge the fact that no one is always happy and that Naruto had earned moments of true reflections at his life. Anger of herself as well as everyone's misjudgment of Naruto's abilities and disappointment at Jiraiya for apparently wasting three years of Naruto's life, not training him. naruto -kun, tell me about your training with Jiraiya-sama? After all, you spend three years training with him? Dash asked Shizune, so as to confirm her suspicions. If you could call that training, I mean we practiced a bit of Daijutsu for the first months then we wasted the entire year trying to channel some of the damn fox's chakra in order to control it. Eventually, he gave me a crash course of Genjutsu and that's about it. No ninjutsu training, except perfecting the Rasengan. That's about it. When I asked him about it, he said that he needed to talk to his spying networks about the Akatsuki and left me for granted. So to sum up, he didn't want to waste his time with me. Dash said Naruto, explaining what he did which Shizun could sum up and conclude that from three years, all he trained was six months and nothing more. I can't believe him. He did nothing to train you. No efforts whatsoever. Dash if Shizun was angry, now she was fuming. How could he do something like that with Naruto? How could he waste Naruto's life like that? He pretty much thought the same thing as everyone thinks right now, I guess. But that will end right here right now said Naruto showing determined look that scared his sister a little bit, but she as being his sister, tried to run damage control, but to no avail. Wait, Naruto can, I can talk to Tsunade Zama and she can summon someone who could teach you, you don't need to do this alone. How about that? No, I won't rely on people to train me anymore. From now on, I will only rely on myself to train and get better. If I would tell for all the teachers that I had, I would say that from everyone, only Aruka sensei taught me anything. The other teachers from the academy just didn't want to teach me because of my burden, Kakashi sensei was pressed by the council to teach the stupid Uchiha, Jiraiya didn't want to teach me and only said he would so he would take me away from Konoha and from the Akatsuki's tracks. I'm not even counting Yamato on this. If I want to become better as a shinobi, I will need to do this by myself. Dash exploded Naruto in front of his sister, apparently extinguishing every bit of hope to convince him to calm down a bit. I see. You changed Naruto-kun. I never thought I would see the day when you become like you are now. I kind of miss the old Naruto who was able to convince Tsunadazama to take the position as Hokage. Dash sighed Shizun, as she was resorting to pity talk to try to get through the blonde, but what he answered, it was enough to tell her that maybe that one that she was missing, was just a charade. Well, that old Naruto is gone now, so don't keep your hopes up if you want him to show up again, I need to go now, Shizhniniekan, a two week training awaits for me said Naruto storming off, leaving a wide-eyed Shizun with sadness on her eyes. Meanwhile outside the quarter just as Naruto traveling in order to encounter Kabuto with the Heaven and Earth Bridge was Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, member of Anbu Yamato and Sai, member of the Anbu route. The group was approximately 10 miles away from their destination, so Yamato decided that the group should set camp, because the sky was getting darker by the minute. Once achieved the group's consent, Yamato performed some hand seals and a wood house emerged from the ground that served as a base camp for the group to plan the mission at the very last detail. Once everyone of the group had settled, Yamato gathered everyone and went to the details of the mission. So, from the report that Tsunade Sama handed to me, we are to meet Kabuto with the Heaven and Earth Bridge in a couple's day's time, says Yamato, showing to the group, the area map and a file regarding Kabuto's data. Sakura, why don't you tell me exactly how Sasori is, and give me everything you know? Because if we are to succeed this mission, I need to make a perfect henge technique of sorcery. Once Sakura gave a precise report regarding the Red Scorpion sorcery, Yamato started to tell his plan, regarding the mission, as you all know, the plan is the following, I am going to perform a henge technique and disguise in sorcery in order to abduct Kabuto, hopefully, without any need of battle. You three will hide yourselves and your chakra so that he can't be suspicious of the trap. In case I fail to abduct him. I am to give you three a signal in order to disable Kabuto quickly as possible. Agreed? After a huge high was heard, all went to sleep in order to get ready for the mission in two days. Little did they know that they would have an unexpected visit for none other than the snake Sanin. Mission date When the mission date arrived, Sasori, Yamato in disguise, and Kabuto met in the middle of the bridge, with three Konoha ninjas hiding in a safe distance as to not blow Yamato's cover and ruin the mission. Also, looking up and with a very scary expression, shows Orochimaru, Analyzing the situation and already noticed the three teenage ninjas hidden. All of a sudden, Orochimaru showed up behind Kabuto, with his body surrounded by snakes. Do I smell treason, Kabuto? Dash Orochimaru said with a grin. 
Orochimaru sama? Were you following me? Dash Kabuto answered with apparent surprise in his face. Then Kabuto showed his devotion to the snake Sanin and revealed his plan to kill Sasori, hence Jamato, with his technique Chaka Scalpel, for a bunch of broken wood starts flying, destroying the Makuten Henge technique and showing a surprise Jamato. Once the signal was sent, three Konoha ninjas appeared from their hiding positions, only for Orochimaru tell that he already sensed them before, and knew of the group's intentions, regarding Kabuto. Haruno Sakura and Sai were focused on the enemy, but Naruto, only by looking at the responsible for Sasuke leaving Konoha in order to obtain power, became angry at a point that his eyes burned red, his hair, fingernails and teeth changed in a way never seen before, as well as tails appearing, one by one. When the third tail appeared, a red aura emanated from Naruto could be sensed by the entire forest, scaring both Sakura and Sai, since they were clueless of what was happening to his teammate. Yamato figured this out and quickly told to both, that's Kyuubi's chakra, not Naruto's, which resulted in a more scared expression of Sakura. Once the four tail appeared, Naruto transformed into a little Kyuubi with four tails and red skin, now recognizable by no one and set to charge Orochimaru, who cursed Naruto for his lack of skill, since he resorted to the Kyuubi's chakra. Pitiful child, resorting to Kyuubi all the time. All that Naruto could say was grown at anything, since he is now being controlled by the nine-tailed beast. After a monster-like fight between Orochimaru and Minikyubi and the entire destruction of the area, Orochimaru and Kabuto escaped and Yamato had to stay doing his Makuten technique in order to calm the Kyuubi's chakra and save Naruto, cursing him for resorting to Kyuubi's chakra without any need for it. Once Yamato saved Naruto, the group, now without Sai since he escaped with Orochimaru in order to fulfill his secret mission given by Dansu, leader of Root, started to chase Orochimaru, until they reached his hideout. By performing a Doden technique, the three group members infiltrated the hideout. Once inside, they managed to find Sai in his secret mission, only for him to say that since they found out his mission, he failed this mission. After a search throughout the hideout, the now entire group found Uchiha Sasuke and engaged him in battle. Then from out of nowhere, Sasuke showed the results of his training and appeared in front of Naruto, with his sword in his hand, ready to stab Naruto's back and saying, You shouldn't come here, Naruto. I told you already you do not stand a chance against me. You are too much of a knucklehead to ever win a fight against anyone with at least low chunin level. Laughed Sasuke. Shut up you team, barked Naruto, infuriated with the adjective knucklehead. Sai managed to stop Sasuke's blade with his own, only for Sasuke laugh and use his new technique called Chidori Nagashi and blasted everyone with electricity current. After, Sasuke escaped with Orochimaru and Kabuto resulting the mission to fail and for the group to report to Tsunade-sama, the god I'm Hokage of Konoha Hidden Village. On the way back, Yamato argued with Naruto, Naruto, why would you channel to Kyuubi's chakra before? Because of that, this mission failed and you are to be held responsible for it. If only you tried to think once in your life, you would not make as many bad decisions as you make. Sorry Yamato-sensei, I was careless. But all Naruto could think is, why everyone underestimates me. Why everyone call me knucklehead? Why, Sakurakan is blaming me as well for failing the mission? Naruto then looked at Sakura, who was giving him an evil glare, reached him and started vomiting angry words at Naruto. Why Naruto? Don't you want to rescue Sasuke? You've made a promise to me, you know? Why you screw up all the time, knucklehead? Naruto, when hearing that nickname, became very angry at her. In fact that nickname he has been hearing every time since he graduated from the academy. Sakura's curse at Naruto was the last one needed for him to get furious in the worst possible level. He knew it was time to change the way the population of Konoha and foreigners think about Uzumaki Naruto. Once near the village, Naruto knew one thing never again will people underestimate me. A couple days after the mission, the group was standing beside the god I'm, giving the report of the mission that was a complete failure. So, Yamato report on your mission, ordered Tsunade. Hi Tsunade-sama. As planned. I hedged and Isasori and encountered Kabuto at the designated area. However we had an unexpected visit from Orochimaru that happened to plot an assassination of the Akatsuki member with the help of Kabuto, Naruto, after hearing about Sasuke from Orochimaru became angry, channeling the power of the QB4 tails and turned to fight Orochimaru and Kabuto at the same time. After that, Orochimaru and Kabuto escaped, I managed to turn Naruto back into his form with Makuten Jutsu and Sakura healed his burned body. After following Orochimaru and Kabuto's trace we managed to find their hideout and we came face to face with Sasuke. Once Naruto and him were neck to neck, 
Being tired because of the QB's transformation, Naruto didn't have time to rest, failing to capture him and they escaped, explained Yamato, finishing his report. Tsunade noticed evil glares from Yamato and Sakura towards Naruto, which came as a surprise to her, so she bothered to give the blonde shinobi the right to verify the story said by Yamato. The story is true, said Naruto, never losing his new serious posture, which once again appeared strange to the blonde Hokage, since she expected him to be either screaming his lungs on his behalf or becoming angry at them for implying that it was his fault the mission failed. Tsunade actually was a little drunk, so just to play with the blonde. She aimed a chakra-enhanced punch directly on his face. She would not hit him with it, in fact she would stop her arm really close to his nose. When the fist approached, Tsunade noticed that Naruto did not even bother to defend himself or even showed any side of fear for the upcoming blow. When she stopped the punch inches from Naruto's face, she, as intrigued as she was, turned to ask why. Why you didn't defend yourself? My fist could make quite damage on your skull. Now. She was more than ever worried about her surrogate family's sanity, since the old one would close his eyes and be frightened, just waiting for the blow. It's because I admit my failure and I deserve to be punished, Hokage-sama. The entire mission was a failure and it was because of my stupidity and harsh thinking, therefore I am to hold responsible for the failure of the mission," said Naruto, earning glances from everyone. Sakura and Yamato, even though were very mad at Naruto, never passed though their heads that Naruto would admit that he was wrong or even be held responsible for the failure of the mission. Tsunade and Shizune were trying to look for any kind of emotion through Naruto's eyes, but couldn't find anyone, it was like he was admitting defeat. Sai was as stoic and emotionless as ever. But Tsunade, somehow, knew, after looking further, that Naruto wasn't giving up at all, that look on his eyes was almost the same as his father, when serious. This Naruto was frightening her to no end. She never thought she would be scared of Naruto. But now it looks like he suffered an extreme transformation or Minato took over his body. But since the report was over, Tsunade dismissed everyone, so Yamato and Sai shunshined out of the room, while Sakura went for the door and never looked back. After some time, Naruto requested to speak to Tsunade in private, and she agreed. So, Naruto, what would you like to talk to me about and be quick? Now this was a new thing. Normally, Tsunade would already know what Naruto wanted to talk about since usually was about new missions and complaints about the teammates that he was to be grouped with, but now she couldn't anticipate what he was about to talk about and she feared that it could be something serious. Actually, Hagek-sama, I noticed that the Chunin exams will be in two weeks from now, so I would like a two-week training period in order to take the exams and finally advance to Chunin? Dash said Naruto, earning surprising glances from Tsunade, since A, Naruto wasn't calling her Bakken but now Hokage-sama and B. She totally forgot about the Chunin exams. Naruto, I Naruto didn't wait for Tsunade to answer, and requested another favor. Also, I would like those chakra elemental papers, so I can know which chakra element I'm most suited for in order to start my training but, Naruto, what about Team Kakashi? They will need you with them on future missions. Said Tsunade trying to convince him to not do the Chunin exams and proceed with Sakura and Yamato or Kakashi who by this time was already recovered. They can very well take care of each other. And, as they said, all I ever do is mess things up, anyway. Said Naruto, in a calm manner, trying to hide his utter frustration with the so-called teammates of his and the fact that they always underestimate him. Okay, Naruto, I will grant your wish, but we have to talk with Kakashi about it. He will be crushed when you tell him about it. Naruto, knowing that Kakashi was actually hearing the whole conversation, since not only he sensed his chakra signature but also spotted a shadow with spike hair, near one of the windows outside the Hokage's office, showed a little grin and calmly stated. Don't worry about that Hokage-sama, I am sure he already knows. I'll see you in a couple weeks time at the Chunin exams, until then take care of yourself. Said Naruto and walked calmly to the door and left the office. Okay. Said Tsunade, still dumbstruck from seeing the blonde's new behavior, but she was wondering how Naruto knew that Kakashi was already listening to the whole conversation from outside the room. Actually Jiraiya was a master in sensing other people's chakra signatures from far away so she guessed that he taught Naruto that ability up to a kin level with his own. After that, Naruto vanished from sight and Kakashi appeared from the window, as he was hearing everything. He was wondering what the hell happened that made everyone blame Naruto for what happened. Sure Naruto weren't the brightest mind of the rookie nine but to an extent to blame him. But what puzzled him to no end? was Naruto himself and his sudden change and also the fact that Naruto took charge and the responsibility for what happened. 
Kakashi actually was glad of Naruto's antics, since it reminded him so much of his sensei. As Kakashi just entered the room, Naruto collected the chakra elemental papers and stored him inside his pocket, while walking towards the administration building's exit. When Shizun called him so as to have a little conversation and try to understand her surrogate little brother and what's going on with him that resulted in his change of behavior. Shizun was sad at seeing the seriousness in Naruto's face just as Kakashi was. From her part, Naruto's happiness and behavior just happened to bring out the best in people and she was very well proud of her little brother for that part, but now she was scared of what he could be thinking. Naruto can, wait up, I want to talk to you a little bit, if that's okay with you? Dash asked Shizun seeing Naruto's back with his hands inside his pockets, slowly turning himself to watch his sister, while demonstrating a look of total apathy and indifference, much to Shizun's dismay and sadness. What do you need, Shizhnini-ekun? Dash answered Naruto with very little concern in his voice. Naruto-kun, why are you like this? This look of yours doesn't suit you at all. Is there something wrong with you? It's okay, you can talk to me, after all you're like a little brother to me. Dash smiled warmly Shizun a little relieved after receiving a smile from Naruto as well. Don't need to worry about me Shizhnini Ekin, it's just a little realization on my part that now it hit me worse in my face than Tsunadazama's chakra enhanced punches. Said Naruto, who even though showed care to his sister, answered with little bit of emotion. At this, Shizun was caught staring hardly at her brother for what he said, first of all because of how profound he seemed and second was that he once remarked the Hokage as an old lady and now he calls her Tsunadazama or Hokagasama even though they weren't at the presence of such person. What could it be, Naruto can the change that happiness in you that always seemed to cheer everyone up? Where is the old Naruto who could very well change everything bad to good just with his presence? Dash asked Shizun, wondering just where that Naruto was hiding and actually considering that this one wasn't the Naruto she came to know, which in fact it wasn't. I'll tell you Shizhniniakin. It's because of the fact that no one I know thinks of me as a good shinobi or even good at something. For everyone, I'm the dobi the dead last, the idiot, the pathetic excuse of a shinobi. If you have one more, why not add to that list, while we're talking about it? I'm just sick and tired of being underestimated of my abilities and even though that perverted of a sanin didn't teach me shit, I'm going to train all by myself. Dash said Naruto, while Shizun was displaying looks of sadness, anger and disappointment. Sadness was from seeing the one never-ending happiness and stamina freak show his true emotions for the first time as well as acknowledge the fact that no one is always happy and that Naruto had earned moments of true reflections at his life. Anger of herself as well as everyone's misjudgment of Naruto's abilities and disappointment at Jiraiya for apparently wasting three years of Naruto's life, not training him. Naruto-kun, tell me about your training with Jiraiya-sama? After all, you spend three years training with him? Dash asked Shizun so as to confirm her suspicions. If you could call that training, I mean we practiced a bit of taijutsu for the first months then we wasted the entire year trying to channel some of the damn fox's chakra in order to control it. Eventually, he gave me a crash course of genjutsu and that's about it. No ninjutsu training, except perfecting the Rasengan. That's about it. When I asked him about it, he said that he needed to talk to his spying networks about the Akatsuki and left me for granted. So to sum up, he didn't want to waste his time with me. Dash said Naruto, explaining what he did which Shizun could sum up and conclude that from three years, all he trained was six months and nothing more. I can't believe him. He did nothing to train you. No efforts whatsoever. Dash if Shizun was angry, now she was fuming. How could he do something like that with Naruto? How could he waste Naruto's life like that? He pretty much thought the same thing as everyone thinks right now, I guess. But that will end right here right now said Naruto showing determined look that scared his sister a little bit, but she as being his sister, tried to run damage control, but to no avail. Wait, naruto can I can talk to Tsunadazama and she can summon someone who could teach you, you don't need to do this alone. How about that? No, I won't rely on people to train me anymore. From now on, I will only rely on myself to train and get better. If I would tell for all the teachers that I had, I would say that from everyone, only Aruka sensei taught me anything. The other teachers from the academy just didn't want to teach me because of my burden, Kakashi sensei was pressed by the council to teach the stupid Uchiha, Jiraiya didn't want to teach me and only said he would so he would take me away from Konoha and from the Akatsuki's tracks. I'm not even counting Yamato on this. If I want to become better as a shinobi, I will need to do this by myself. Dash exploded Naruto in front of his sister, apparently extinguishing every bit of hope to convince him to calm down a bit. I see. You changed Naruto-kun. I never thought I would see the day when you become like you are now. 
I kind of miss the old Naruto who was able to convince Tsunadazama to take the position as Hokage. Dash sighed Shizune, as she was resorting to pity talk to try to get through the blonde, but what he answered, it was enough to tell her that maybe that one that she was missing, was just a charade. Well, that old Naruto is gone now, so don't keep your hopes up if you want him to show up again, I need to go now, Shij Niniekan, a two week training awaits for me. Said Naruto storming off, leaving a wide eyed Shizune with sadness on her eyes. Meanwhile outside the quarter just as Naruto and Shizune was having their talk, Yui Kura and I was passing by since she had to bring a report to the Hokage about her mission that entailed a complex analysis on the villages around Konoha's economy and security situations. Just as she was about to enter the quarter that lead to the Hokage's office, she overheard voices that she recognized a female's voice belonging to Shizune and a male voice which looked like a grown-up voice from Naruto. While eavesdropping on the conversation, she was being taken aback little by little from what she was listening. Apparently Naruto was telling Shizune about the total waste of his three-year training trip with Jiraiya as well as a list of all his teachers and the lack of wanting to teach anything to the poor blonde. Now by hearing this, Kur and I was pissed beyond words, she somehow knew that Naruto would have a hard time with others because of the QB, but to an extent to jeopardize his abilities and hinder his groan, that was just pure bullshit, might as well turn him into a civilian and that would a better thing to do. She was a little sad of the boy, upon hearing such sad words from his mouth, though. Naruto is he not as crush, because of the fact that Naruto would never quit anything and always show a happy smile on his face, but Kur and I shrugged that thought and concluded that Naruto just suffered too much in his life to try to even be happy about it. Caught in wanderings, Kur and I realized that the conversation was over and Naruto was coming her way. Needing to act fast as to not arouse suspicions from an already pissed Naruto, she needed to think fast. By resorting to her specialty, he hid herself under a genjutsu and waited for Naruto to leave. Little did she know that Naruto already sensed her before. As he opened the door that Kur and I was, he turned to the direction that Kur and I was hiding and began to stare at her, almost as daring her to come clean with the fact that she was eavesdropping on his conversation with Shizune. Kur and I, for her part, was hoping that the blonde was only double checking before he left, but what she listened, just pretty much ended any thought on that part. Kur and Asen, would you be so kind as to drop that low level genjutsu, I'm actually surprised you would think that I wouldn't see through it but then I guess that what everyone thinks of me as being weak, so you wouldn't be different. Dash said Naruto as he continued to walk towards the exit, only to be stopped by the genjutsu mistress that was showing a bit of anger towards the blonde from thinking her of being that superficial and shallow. Naruto, I'm resented at that, you just accused me of being superficial just like everyone. I'm not like that at all. Dash said Kurunai to the blonde a little surprised to see him turning up to her in the coolest manner and displaying another apathy look that showed to Kurunai that she was lying directly on his face. Kurunason, if what you said is true, then why would you resort to such for low-level genjutsu and low-level chakra one as well? Just answer me, were you with the pretension to be caught or you were hoping that I wouldn't be able to see through it, since my abilities with genjutsu wouldn't be sufficient? Dash asked Naruto plain. Simple and with the pressure of a thousand pound weight that seemed to smash through Kuranai's face like nothing else before. Now she was caught and she could do nothing about it, she realized now that she was in fact underestimating him by using such a pitiful technique and for how much she wanted to punch herself a few times, she couldn't change the fact that she just fave enough evidence to back up Naruto's claims. Naruto, I, she somehow couldn't open her mouth to say that he was right and she was once again cursing herself for it. Don't need to explain, Kuranason. I just got my answer. Said Naruto Fan including the case and pretty brought down the hammer on the case. As he continued to walk, he left yet another Kunoichi wide-eyed and sad. As Kurunai turned her back and walked through the corridor that lead to the Hokage's office, she saw Shizune, staring outside, more specifically, staring the blonde walking away from the building, heading towards the Hokage monument, a place which Naruto went pretty often. Kurunai was feeling the exact same thing as Shizune. Guilt. She was angry at everyone who showed no effort on Naruto's part but she was also to blame, since she fed the exact same thing that everyone did and that was underestimate the blonde chun and wannabe's abilities as a ninja. As Shizune turned to exchange glares with Kurunai, she noticed that something happened to her as well and she had a feeling that Naruto had something to do with it. Back at the quarter Shizune was once again why died upon hearing about Kurunai's encounter with Naruto and how Kurunai just gave Naruto enough arguments to support his theory about everyone underestimating his abilities. She was about to shout at Kurunai if not for the fact that she also acted the same way concerning the blonde. I know what you're thinking, Shizune and I fanned to believe on the contrary, but it is true. 
we were all responsible for this fact, I just wished I could do something to remedy that, but I just can't think of anything on that matter. But what scared me the most was the looks on his eyes. It isn't the same Naruto I knew and that Hinata has a crush on. This new looks of his demonstrate sadness and disappointment as well as wave of determination. He changed a lot, probably more than the once his age, but then again he suffered far worse than everyone combined that I just tremble in only thinking how much bad things happen to him and to just keep walking like he does, it's nothing less than admirable, won't you think, Shizun? Yeah I do. At first I was terrified about seeing him like that. After all it was the old Naruto that brought Tsunade Zama back to Konoha and put her out of her sorrow. I know that he changed and became more matured because of it, but he's too young to be like he is now, if I didn't know him, I would assume that he was an experienced Anbu captain who thought the third shinobi war and survived. I'm scared of what he could become, Kuranasen. The mind plays tricks on us and the QB doesn't help the situation, if he snaps, I don't know what would happen to him. Shizun. I believe that you are once again misjudging his abilities just like everyone has been doing. Dash said Gurunai, so that once again Shizun became wide-eyed at the Kunoichi's explanation. What do you mean? I mean that he is 15 years old and has been keeping the demon at bay since he was born and here you are saying that the QB could make him suffer more than he already suffered throughout his existence. If that is true, then his life is condemned. I can see clearly now, Shizun. To him to grow as a ninja as well as keep the worst of the Baijuu from tampering with his life, is one hell of an assignment that I don't think anyone would be able to do it. I just hope that the boy dot know, that man can find happiness once in his life. Now, I have to deliver a report Shizunashan, so if you excuse me. By all means, Kuranasan. Dash said Shizun, as she turned to walk away towards the hospital. Meanwhile, she was once again lost in thoughts from Kuranai's words about Naruto and the QB. She was berating herself for the fact that she seemed to underestimate Naruto's abilities on a subconscious level, like it was common sense and now the only thing she wished was for Naruto to forgive her and move on. At the Hokaye's room while the conversations were on, Kakashi was having his one with Tsunade and obviously the talk was about the blonde Janan's new behavior in the late turn of events. What was all that, Hokage-sama? What happened to Naruto? Dash said Kakashi as he was entering the office from the window. Don't annoy me, Kakashi. I am more perplexed than you, you know. Feel free to talk with him, because for what I know, in their last mission, something went bad and everyone blamed him for the failure and know he seems very pissed about it. Sighed Tsunade, wondering what the hell happened with the once hyperactive ninja. I've looked in his eyes, Hokagasama. He's not the same Naruto as before. Something very serious happened to him, and I don't think the QB has anything to do with this situation. What could be the issue here? Oh. Try to talk to him. He's either at Ichiraku's or talking to Umino Iruga. No, wait. That where the old Naruto would go. Oh I don't know where he could be now. Find him and talk to him and bring a report to me after that. Hi. With that, Kakashi vanished in a puff of smoke, and appeared right in front of Ichiraku's ramen, but he couldn't find him there. For once, Kakashi was having a hard time finding Naruto. He was not at Ichiraku's, Iruka hadn't seen him. After a couple hours of search and nothing of Naruto. He looked up and noticed the Hokage monument with all the faces of the Kijas, and remembered of his sense in Amikaze Minato. He also sighed about thinking about the Ondame's legacy as Itachi once said and the fact that Naruto may never be the same again. It was just at that moment that he spotted the one he was looking for sitting on the Yondame's head, therefore, Shan shining near him only to see the chakra paper cut in half and wet as well. So, Naruto, you have affinity with wind and water type Jutsus. That's very good. Actually, in order to become a Jounin, you must at least master two elements. It seems you are right on track. Said Kakashi surprised that his student had two affinities already. Yes, I noticed. Dash said Naruto, still staring at the village that he pledged alliance to, even though he had a couple of good memories and a lot of bad ones. But Konoha was his home and he would be damned before running away from it and become a missing nin. Naruto, why are you doing all this? Why are you acting like this? This isn't you, what happened? I can answer your little questionnaire with one word, tired. Dash summed it up Naruto, earning glanced from his sensei. Tired? Tired of what? Dash asked Kakashi one of the dumbest question anyone could be asking Naruto at the moment and he very well knew of, but he wanted to press Naruto so to know just what is up with him, but to his dismay, Naruto explained in a cool manner that Kakashi wondered where the old Naruto was. The fact is, Kakashi sensei, I'm fed up with everyone regarding me as weak, a dead last. 
I'm fed up about everyone I know underestimate my abilities, I'm tired about those who vowed to teach me how to be a good shinobi, resorted to being a hypocrite and just teach me the basics. Basically, I concluded that if I am to become strong, I'm on my own, so I'm going to train by myself since at least I won't be depending on people that due to different circumstances, stop teaching me and turn to teach others. So I'm alone in this field. Dash said Naruto, now literally beating Kakashi with just words, a feat that Kakashi never would have expected from Naruto. I can very well try to lie to you Naruto and say that what you are saying is complete bullshit, but the fact is you're right. At least for my part, I ended up teaching you the tree walking exercise and nothing else, I'm sorry. Dash actually, the council was to blame for that since they wanted for Kakashi to teach only the Uchiha, but he didn't want Naruto to know that and then wanting to go after them. But little did he know that Naruto knew the truth. Kakashi-sensei, you're in no need to vow for the council, okay? I know that they forced you to train the traitor, so stop trying to protect them, you're in no need for such a thing. I'm not going after them, if you are afraid of that. But I also know that Jiraiya didn't do shit with me and he was in no pressure from anyone, since he is a Sanin. But I can't sit here and depend on a teacher to be strong, because if I do that, I can guarantee that I would be a Janan for my whole life. If you want. I could train you better? Thanks but no thanks. Even though you are the only one that taught me anything besides Iroka sensei, I vowed to train for myself for now on. Dash said Naruto acknowledging the fact that Kakashi was the only one who didn't think less of him. I see. So, the Chunin exams, I believe you can very well pass without much trouble, and becoming a Chunin, you are on the right way to live your dream, right? Dash asked Kakashi, being almost certain that no matter how he has changed, he never would abandon his dream of becoming Hokage. Yes, but what my dream is and what you think, it's pretty different things. You see, becoming a Chunin diminished the path to become what I dream of, but it's not the position of Hokage I want anymore. Dash said Naruto, this time making Kakashi drop his jaw so much that even with his mask everyone could see that. You don't want to become Hokage anymore? No I don't. The Hokage position means having to take crap for granted and I happen to swallow too much bullshit to actually want any more of that. Also, I wouldn't believe for a second that I would have the same respect as the other Hokages, being the QB container and being known as the knucklehead. So I decided to become an Anbu instead and be of service for Konoha behind the curtains, at least this way I don't have to deal with hypocrisy and political bullshit. I see. Well, I'm pretty sure you have a lot to do Naruto, so I'm out of here. Just so you know. If you need help in anything, just let me know, okay? Sure thing, Kakashi sensei and thank you, along with Iruka sensei, you guys were the only ones who didn't leave me for granted and didn't underestimate me, I appreciate that. Don't need to do that, Naruto. You'll be a great shinobi and I'll see the chunin exams, so make me and Iruka proud, okay? Dash said Kakashi smiling at the man that was once his student. Oh and if you see Sakura, tell her that I'll be leaving the team for practice and may never return. And in case she asks about it, just tell her that she got what she wanted, I'm out of her life. Dash said Naruto. Very well, Naruto. I'm off, see you and good luck on the training. Dash said Kakashi, vanishing in a swirl of leaves, just after sighing about Team 7 as being the one that displayed the worst teamwork in Konoha's history of Shinobis. With Naruto then, Naruto got up from where he was sitting and felt the sudden wind breeze that appeared, washing away any sorrow on his part and further improving his already high determination in order to train until exhaustion and become a real shinobi, one who wasn't afraid to do what needed to be done, one who could show fear to his enemies just with his presence, one that could very well demonstrate that pure determination and willpower can overcome all the adversities. As he was returning to the village, he was becoming more determined to change his life as it is and improve his shinobi abilities for good. Sakura's house after leaving Naruto at the Hokage Monument, Kakashi went to Sakura's house to tell her regarding Naruto's choice and the future of Team Kakashi. Kakashi at first didn't want to see Naruto like that, but he figured that eventually everyone have to grow up and therefore he was relieved that Naruto was no longer a child, but a man that actually know what he needs and is very well on the way to conquer his dream. As he reached Sakura's house, he sighed as he was the one to bring the sad news for her but he figured that since he was the Jounin sensei of the team it was his responsibility and no one's. So, he knocked a couple of times until Sakura answered. Sakura, are you home? Dash knocked Kakashi. Hi, Kakashi sensei, what do you need? I've come to talk to you about the future of team Kakashi future? What do you mean? Our team is going to return a three-man group. Said Kakashi with his stoic face while Sakura was figuring that Sai would be the one that be out since he in theory was just a substitute for Sasuke. 
Oh. So Sai won't be joining us, then? Dash said Sakura it's not Sai who's leaving the squad, Sakura, Naruto is. Huh? Why would he leave? Dash asked Sakura perplexed. She was wondering why the hell did Naruto left Team 7 for an instantly remembered about his sudden turn of behavior at the Hokage's office. Sure Naruto was a pain in the ass to handle and always put the team in difficult situations, but never did she think that Naruto would be leaving her. He asked Tsunade Sama to give him a two-week training period alone, in order for him to pass the Chunin exams that will be held in exact two weeks from today. The Chunin exams? Surely, he doesn't realize that two weeks wouldn't be enough for him to be prepared. I don't think he will ever be prepared to the pass the exams, he always gets in the way of things, always screw up. He is such a baka. He abandoned us, just like Sasuke did. Said Sakura fuming inside since she wanted to have a few words with a knucklehead. Sakura, I would advise you not to use such words on him. You don't know what Naruto went through in life. As a matter of fact, no one understands what Naruto went through, and I know you are aware of his situation. And he is just starting where he left. Since he left with Jiraiya-sama to train for three years, so he is becoming a chunin, just like the rest of the rookie nine. Kakashi-sensei, how can you defend his actions? I know about his burden, but there's no reason for him to leave us like he did. Well, at least after he gets the chunin position, will he return with us? Dash asked Sakura to Kakashi, before seeing the look that her sensei was giving her and thought for the worst. This may not sound good for you to hear, but he doesn't want to become a part of the team anymore. Why not? Dash asked Sakura, being more than mad of the blonde. Actually, he told Hokage-sama that Team Kakashi can very well take care of ourselves as well as the fact that he was through with all your complaints and guilt charges on him. I actually agree with him in his decision, he was never appreciated to begin with. Sasuke almost killed him three years ago and now you blames him for the failure of the mission, but as I seen the report, it seemed that you weren't so helpful either, Sakura. Oh and he wanted to tell you a specific message. Would you like to hear it? Dash asked Kakashi. Sakura was now out of her mind. Not only Naruto abandoned her but also Kakashi was backing him up. Surely, she didn't do anything to help on the mission seeing as she had to be saved from Yamato because she was knocked unconscious when Naruto four tails threw him with chakra towards her direction. Now, Naruto gave her a message and she could very well tell him to go to hell right now, but told Kakashi to tell her. Spell it out. What is it that idiot wanted you to tell me about? He asked me to tell you that you got what you wanted and that he's out of your life for good. Right now, Kakashi said with so enthusiasm to Sakura that he immediately felt better. He was disappointed at Sakura for being so selfish as believing that she was the victim. Now Sakura, since the beginning of the academy, criticized Naruto. When the news reached her ear, suddenly, a sense of sorrow ran through her mind and she became surprised. Now that she thought about it. Naruto was the only one who was there for her even though she did nothing but either scream at him or punch him in the face. She never paid attention to Naruto's feelings at all, in fact the only thing she cared about was either Sasuke or getting Sasuke back from the hands of the snake Sanin. She was feeling guilt, but it was over now, because Team 7 would never be the same again. Kakashi noted that Sakura felt guilty and said, it's such a shame to lose a partner like Naruto, because of a stupid situation, as it was. But now the damage is done. I hope that Naruto can move on in the near future. Honestly, and trust me Sakura, with the Sharingan, I can read any person's emotions, and I can tell that's going to be a while for him to forgive what happened. For your information, he even gave up the dream of becoming Hokage. Because of me? Dash said Sakura surprised. Before she was feeling like a punch went through her face but now if that was true, there wasn't enough pain in the world that could describe someone shattering another person's dream on a subconscious level. No, not only you but because of everyone. He said that being the QB's container and known as the hyperactive knucklehead ninja of Konoha, he would get the respect that Tsunade Zama and the previous Hokages haven't had. So, what is his dream now? Anbu. Now, Sakura I have to go take care of the formalities. We are expected at Tsunade Zama's office tomorrow at 6. Bye. Said Kakashi after Shun shining away. Even though Sakura couldn't comprehend the changes that will occur in her life as a ninja, she managed to conclude that both her teammates Sasuke and Naruto left her. Sasuke left because he wanted to gain power in order to kill his brother, one day. And now, Naruto left, not because he wanted anything. In fact, she knew that he left because of her and, therefore, tears starts falling down her face and she don't know what to do. Her once pride of being apprenticed by the great Medicna Tsunade got through to her and her ego was getting as big as Sasuke if not bigger, but now she couldn't feel better at all, 
It was like a part of her was missing and she couldn't for a fact decide what to do. She was considering talking to the Hokage about it but shrugged off since she already knew what happened. One thing for sure, Sakura's pride just went downhill. Sakura decided to take a walk to see if she could take her mind out of Naruto, but she couldn't and the tears that she let fall for Sasuke when he left now returned and she was feeling cold once again. She was feeling useless once again, like she didn't in whole three years. Sakura, since Naruto left, received a shower of arrogance after being announced the apprentice of the Hokage, since only Shizune was and she would be on the same level of authority. Since then, she berated people for it, literally shoving on their faces the fact that she was the apprentice of the Hokage and that everyone had to follow her orders. In fact, she was beginning to behave just like Sasuke and his whole Imanuchiha and I deserve this and that. Even Ino, who was once her best friend, abandoned her and went on her way. But due to the fact that Ino was a medic and just as Sakura, she had to obey her orders, but at least she wasn't her friend anymore. Now, Sakura was thinking about all the time she showed the Hokage's authority and she wished she could turn back in time. She somehow wished that Sasuke and Naruto were with her this moment and reassure her, or at least rise her confidence a little bit. Without knowing, she ended up on the hospital, since the track from her house to the hospital was memorized inside her mind since she did that all day. Deciding to try and talk to Ino, since the blonde Kunoichi up to a time was her best friend. Since she was the one attending today, Ino was seen walking between the rooms in as to check the patients. It was easy to Sakura to spot her and begin the talking. Hi Ino, how is going? Dash asked Sakura, with all the innocence possible so as to not show that she was an arrogant Kunoichi who did nothing that boss around and show her arrogance throughout the hallway. But Ino was far from seeing that in Sakura. For a long time, all Sakura did was berate her saying she was the apprentice of the Hokage. What do you want Sakura-sama? Dash reported Ino almost saluting the Hokage herself, but in the most angry manner, showing to Sakura just how despicable her presence was to the others. Sakura upon hearing the suffix, became wide-eyed in sadness, it was like she was brainwashed and couldn't remember what happened, but started looking down since she deserved the poor treatment. Please don't call me Inakin, I'm sorry about all the times I showed authority when I never had in the first place. I'm your age and a chunin as well. I was so caught up on the fact that Hokage-sama nominated me as her apprentice that I started to behave arrogant and bossy, when actually I'm not even close to her in such respect. Dash said Sakura, almost bursting in tears for such a thing. Now Ino for her part was looking at the eyes of her once best friend trying to look for deception, but couldn't find none. Something must have happened to her to be like this. Ino decided to let go of the hate for a little bit and let the old friend inside again. Sakurakin. Since Naruto left you're nothing but an arrogant bitch who behaved like the Uchiha, believing that you had the authority from the Hokage. But I can see that you realize that and that you're trying to remedy that. Also I believe that you wanted to talk to me about something. Come on let's take a cup of coffee and relax a little bit. Dash said Ino, seeing the sudden cheer appearing in Sakura's face. Thank you, Inakin, said Sakura, as the girls went to the vending machine and each picked their choice of coffee and started the conversation that's being bugging her. Okay, Sakurakan, what you wanted to talk about? Dashino decided to start the conversation since Sakura was at first reluctant to tell. It's about my team. Naruto left Team 7. Dash said Sakura. What? Why did he do that? Said Ino, thinking why the hell did Naruto decided to abandon Team 7? According to Kakashi Sensei, he asked Tsunade Azama, time for him to train to the Chunin exams. Also our last mission was not accomplished and I and Yamato couldn't stop blaming him for the failure, berating him on the entire trip home. Naruto changed Anakin. I can't see the old Naruto anymore, this one is determined, reserved. When we briefed the mission to Tsunade Azama, he took all the responsibility for the failure of the mission. Dash said Sakura, explaining the details. Well, Sakurakin, since he wanted my opinion, I can say that Naruto was really fed up with you and you're berating him all the time. You remember at the academy, we didn't stop beating him because of Sasuke and while you were in his team, you didn't stop beating him and calling him names. I mean that isn't so much a person can take and doesn't do anything about it. Yeah, but Kakashi Sensei told me that Naruto doesn't want to be in my life anymore and come to think about, he was there for me even though I never was there for him and it hurts really much. I don't know what to do to take this pain away. Dash said Sakura squeezing the place where her heart was located. Sakurakan times heals all wounds. Just wait and see what happens. Right now, there is nothing you can do about it. If what you said is true, then leave this thing be and when the time comes, try and talk to him. Now, Sakurak and I have to go back to my shift, 
but if you want to talk about it, I'm here okay? Dash said Dino with a smile. Okay, Inakin, thank you. Back at her place at night right now, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and Sakura still was awake, thinking only of Naruto and the mess she created. In fact, Sakura could not fall asleep at all. When the alarm clock biped 6 a.m., she remembered it was time to go to Tsunade Zama's office for Team Kakashi's next assignment. The new Team 7 arrived at Tsunade's office, Sai and Kakashi appeared from a twirl of leaves and Sakura knocked on the door, two minutes later, for Kakashi to report. Team 7 reporting for duty, Hoga Kazama. Tsunade forgot for a moment that Naruto wasn't on this team anymore and asked of his whereabouts and immediately corrected herself, however at hearing the name, Sakura started to look down and feel sad for what happened. The reason why Sakura was sad wasn't entirely because of Naruto, but Sakura couldn't figure out why she was crying. It was most because of Naruto, but the whole reason of it. I figured for your expression, that you've already heard of Naruto? Dash asked Tsunade, seeing the sad look coming for the apprentice. Actually, out of Kakashi and Sai, Sakura would naturally suffer the most, since she would assume that Sasuke left because of her. Hi, Hokagasama. Hang in there, Sakura. He is Naruto, after all. He'll never quit, because of a petty adversity such as this one. This time was Kakashi to speak, actually, Hokagasama, I managed to talk to Naruto and I can't say I agree with you anymore in respect to Naruto's new behavior. He changed, he's not the same anymore. I know he changed, Kakashi I could see his face and trust me he's not the same as before. But I wanna know what caused him to change that and I know it wasn't just because of the mission. You're right Tsunade Azama, it wasn't. Naruto, since he graduated for the academy, was treated like the Denlast, the Dobi, and for some reason everyone kept underestimating his abilities, every time believing that he needed to be protected. He was tired of being called knucklehead all the time and the mission was just what was missing for him to snap and change like what you're seeing now. I see. Also, Hokagasama, he no longer aspires to the Hokage position. Dash said Kakashi delivering the bomb. Excuse me? Tsunade went in shock after such words from Kakashi. He told me that being known as the knucklehead as well as the QB container, not only the civilians would question him but also the shinobi population. Also he didn't want to deal with more problems than he already faced, so he chose to become a part of Anbu Special Forces. A ninja that protects Konoha from behind the curtains. Explained Kakashi. Unbelievable. I guess even for Naruto, sometimes the person just needs time for himself. But I don't believe that's all of it. I could see very well in his eyes, he's not backing out of this, this Naruto we never met before. He is not the always smile and happy face that we came to know. This is a reserve shinobi, someone who doesn't want attention for himself. I'm afraid that the Uzumaki Naruto that we knew, may never come again. Dash said Tsunade, already coming in terms with the new facts. Hi, Hokagasama. Said Kakashi agreeing with the Hokage's assessment. Well, I have a B-ranked mission for Team Kakashi to accomplish. Actually, is an escort mission. The client will arrive here in 30 minutes. He's the son of the fire Daimayu and he is heading for a diplomatic mission with Iwa. Your job is to escort him, guard his back when Iwa and return him to the Daimayu's house. Understood? Hi, Hokage-sama, Kakashi promptly said, as he received the mission scroll from Tsunade. Everyone, meet me in one hour at the west gate and pack for a period of two weeks travel. Sakura immediately thought back to her conversation with Kakashi and remembered that the Chunin exams were to be held in two weeks, allowing her the opportunity to see the new Naruto, and will become of his training. With Team Kakashi all gathered at Konoha's West Gate, the Daimayu's son, Kenshin, introduced himself to everyone and they went away, straight to Iwa. As Naruto got out of the Hokage Monument, he was walking through Konoha with his hands on his pockets and with the same old apathetic look. But on the inside, his mind was racing through all the possibilities. He would like to spend some time fighting his clones to improve Taijutsu and quick fighting skills as well as his ability to make quick decisions. After that came Ninjutsu training. He also berated himself for having only two strong techniques, Cage Bunshine and Rasengan, and when he asked Jiraiya to teach him new ones, the pervy sage ended up saying that the Rasengan needed to be perfected. Meanwhile, Shikamaru was walking the other way muttering himself over some troublesome argument he had with Damari over the fact that they would be working together for the upcoming Chunin exams that will be held. When he looked up, he saw Naruto and instantly noticed something different from the blonde. He remembered Tamari saying that she heard some rumors regarding Naruto and that he changed 180 degrees after the failure of the mission that involved Sasuke Uchiha's retrieval. 
Shikamaru never liked the Uchiha that much and he was the cause of his first failure as a chunin. Now, he was responsible of changing the forever happy Naruto. That, Shikamaru thought was near impossible and too damn troublesome to be true. But as he saw the look of Naruto, he chose to confirm the suspicions. Hey Naruto, how's going? Greeted Shikamaru, seeing Naruto slowly lifting his head like it was too boring to do, let alone answering the question and starting a conversation with the lazy chunin. Fine Shikamaru. What you're up to? Oh nothing much, just thinking about my training routine. I have only two weeks and I need to start the training tomorrow, said Naruto, not even bothering to smile once to the lazy chunin. Training for what? Dash Shikamaru already knew of his attendance at the chunin exams from Tsunade, but he didn't want to show Naruto that he already knew, since he would be one of the judges. But Shikamaru figured that Naruto would keep saying that he would become chunin all the time as well as the whole one next step to become Hokage speech that was almost Naruto's mantra, but little did he know that this isn't the old Naruto anymore. If you don't know Shikamaru, it would be pointless to explain it to you. Besides I'm busy right now. I need to plan a little schedule in order to better train myself. See ya, said Naruto, earning glances from Shikamaru. Yep, he changed from water to oil. Shikamaru was in trance. Naruto didn't once tell him about the word Hokage and actually gave him a sarcastic remark. It's for the Chunin exams, isn't it? Asked Shikamaru, wanting to hear more from the new Naruto. Shikamaru was getting more interest as the conversation was proceeding. You're a real genius, Shikamaru. It took you a while to come to that answer. But I guess you already knew didn't you? But then again why would you try and deceive me like that and not come clean about it on the spot? Would you perhaps thought that I wouldn't know that? Please, Shikamaru, I don't need this, okay? I'm out of here, said Naruto with little to no emotion talk towards Shikamaru. For Shikamaru's part, he was stunned. He did thought that Naruto wouldn't be able to see underneath the underneath but as he was saying with a cool voice, he was literally open his mouth in amazement thinking this is some of dream or something. Little did he know that Naruto actually resented those who underestimated him and that Naruto on the inside was once again fuming. Sorry about that, Naruto. I'm really am. Did you already come up with something like a schedule yet? Let me help you to make up for you. Dash Shikamaru was impressed at his friend's sudden change of aspects that he vowed to help him. Now. Shikamaru was considering that this Chunin exams would be interesting as hell. It's okay. I don't like to be underestimated, just keep that in mind Shikamaru. As to the schedule, I figured that since I have an affinity with wind and water jutsus, it would be best for me to go at the Konoha library and study about it, but I was thinking of study precise chakra control, since I sincerely lack of and some fast taijutsu practice. No doubt about it, he really changed up to the point where no one can recognize him anymore thought Shikamaru while looking at the new Naruto. Say, Naruto, you want me to make a training schedule for you to keep up? What do you have in mind? Naruto asked, keeping his guard down for a moment. Shikamaru, then, wrote a list of subjects to study and practice and handled to Naruto. The list involved a period of 15 days training. It started with chakra control exercises within the three first days. Shikamaru also wrote some books for Naruto to pick followed by two days studying the essences of wind jutsus and weaknesses of such jutsu nature. Then, two days with wind chakra exercise and manipulation, followed by a collection of wind jutsus to learn and practice in three days period, on the list, Shikamaru suggested at least to master three wind techniques. The last part of the schedule involved water style essence and weakness for two days and water jutsu practice, also suggested three techniques, for the last two days. The last day is meant to Naruto rest for the chunin exams. Let me see. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I want to train some taijutsu as well. So how about take one day of studying the essence of water jutsu, so I can, on the 14th day of my training, focus on martial arts with my clones. Okay, then, so since you will spend less time with water techniques, I suggest you try harder the two days available for this task. Easy. I just don't sleep at all, surely I can keep up with this routine. Hey Naruto. Remember that this type of training is almost impossible to conclude, so, try not to overdo it. If you're starting to get low on chakra, rest a little bit. Whatever you do, in order to complete your training, you cannot use one full day for rest. I know that, Shikamaru. I'm actually surprised you cared so much said Naruto in a sarcastic manner, much to Shikamaru's dismay, figuring that this Naruto gained a little sarcastic behavior. Well, I was only trying to help you, but since you know what to do. I'll leave you be. 
I always found strange that you have such abnormal chakra capacity but that's another mystery that is Uzumaki Naruto. Anyway, I will be the judge of the Chunin exams and I will be seeing you personally. Since you don't like to be underestimated, I'm thinking about raising the grade limit for you to become a Chunin. You'll be required to be more than just Chunin material to Konoha, you would have to be Chunin material up to my standards and I assure you it won't be easy, said Shikamaru, challenging Naruto but no in a threatening level. The tougher, the better Shikamaru. I'll be seeing you then. Take it easy and say hi to Tamari for me. Tell her that I want a match against her in Fuutan in Jutsu for I'm done with the Chunin exams, said Naruto as he became to walk towards his apartment. I will. Wait said Shikamaru and already cursed himself for thinking that Naruto knew of Tamari and him or not. You changed to quite an interesting guy, Naruto, I'll be seeing you at the Chunin exams. End flashback. This time, Naruto didn't wear his black orange outfit. Instead he wore an outfit that he used when training with Jiraiya that is black pants and dark grey blouse, since he made a decision to eliminate all the orange. In order to prevent cold looks from Konoha's population, Naruto jumped from roof to roof until he arrived in front of the Konoha library. During his travel, he sensed the presence of all the rookie nine training, except for Sakura which could only mean that Team Kakashi were on a mission outside of Konoha. Actually, Naruto improved his skills of chakra sense during his training with Jiraiya. Hayuganeji, family prodigy and now Konoha Jounin, activated his Kakegenkai and spotted a figure jumping from roof to roof at a very high speed even for his Byakugan to follow, and knew right away who the speeder was. Uzumaki Naruto. Neji gave a little laugh, stating he indeed have changed, as he was nothing like before. Then Neji was caught by surprise when he saw that Naruto was actually looking at him from a considerable distance away, with an indifferent expression in his face, though. Actually, everyone who knew him instantly thought the same thing as Neji. Neji came to know from rumors that Naruto would be participating on the next Chunin exams and he wanted to know how was his training with the Sanin Jiraiya. I'll do everything to see Naruto's improvement in the exam. When Naruto arrived in front of the library, he remembered his very words in reference to the library, never would I step my foot in this hellhole. But he knew that if he wanted to grow as a ninja, he had no choice but to study Konoha books. Once inside, Naruto handed to the librarian a list with all the books he'd be needing for his training. Excuse me, miss, can I have these books? Well certainly. Can I see your library card? I don't have one. It's my first time here. Oh I see, so tell me your name, age and ninja rank for me to fulfill the necessary forms. Certainly. Naruto Uzumaki, Jinan of Konoha, 15 years old. Okay. All set. Now, let's get those books you requested, shall we? Said the librarian as she instantly found all the books and handed to Naruto. Thanks, Miss O and Naruto, your time limit is in 20 days from now, enjoy. With that, Naruto exited the library packed all the books in a scroll and went like a bullet to his home in order to start studying. What Naruto didn't know was that the librarian reported to Lady Tsunade, a list of all the books requested by the new shinobi as a way of seeing if their shinobi would expand their knowledge. At the Hokaye's office after reading the report, Tsunade was surprised that Naruto of all people would go to the library, but she realized that Naruto isn't the same as he was before, which frightened her a little bit. Right now she couldn't decide if she should feel happy or sad for Naruto. Happy because the blonde shinobi would finally follow the right tracks and said because he isn't the same overconfident Naruto who convinced her of becoming god I'm Hokage. She was really confused. At that moment, Shizune entered the room and saw the Hokage lost in thought. I presume it's about Naruto. Started Shizune. She already told Tsunade about Naruto's training from Jiraiya and was scared of her master. Tsunade was fuming with anger at the Toad Sanin, since he was practically the reason why he was like he is now but after some time she calmed herself, since she was getting eager to see the new Naruto. You're a genius, how could you tell, said Tsunade with sarcasm, actually in the same way as Naruto's new characteristic. He is going to be strong, Tsunade-sama. I don't know but when he talked to me and Kurunai yesterday morning, there was something that he did to us, that we just couldn't see the old Naruto anymore. He was able to beat the two of us just with words. And to believe that he is at least ten years younger than us. Rest assured, Tsunade-sama. He will be strong, mark my words for it. Do you think he'll ever forgive Sakura and Yamato for what they done to him? Hard to tell. He always smiled at tense situations. And since I saw that look on his face I was paralyzed. I've never seen him like that. The events that succeeded really changed his way of thinking. He is not the brat we all know. He is a man now. He is a ninja of belief, 
said Shizun with a hint of newfound proud when talking about her brother. After wonderful words given by Shizun, Tsunade suffered a small surge of adrenaline in her body. She could not wait to see how strong he will become at the Chunin exams and in the future. At Naruto's apartment after three hours of studying chakra control, Naruto decided to take a break and try a chakra focus exercise that he learned from the book. The exercise consisted on focusing chakra on the user's feet sticking them to the wall, then climbs up the wall until you reach the ceiling and stay upside down for one hour. At first, Naruto thought it was impossible. But in the middle of the exercise, he realized that it was not that hard, that he could hold on much longer than one hour. After two hours, Naruto felt his legs trembling so he released it and fell smoothly on this apartment floor. The emotion he felt when he completed the exercise was overwhelming. When he went to see the exercise in the book, he noticed that on the next page, it showed a score, if you manage to stay one hour hanged, you have chakra control equivalent to a mid chunin level. If you went up to two hours, you are at least high chunin level. At the end of the first day, Naruto already have up to 65 effective chakra control. When he read the second book on the second day, he noticed that the focus now was using techniques. He learned how to use the correct amount of chakra for ninjutsus from all classes, from A to S, in order to save the largest amount of chakra possible. Since Naruto had an explosive amount of chakra, if he managed to use just the necessary amount of chakra for each technique, it would take a miracle for him to ever suffer from chakra exhaustion. When the second book was done, Naruto decided to experiment something he never tried before, doing Rasengan without the need of a shadow clone. At first, he couldn't do it properly and the energy went unstable, breaking a little piece of the living room's wall. He remembered what the book said about channeling just the necessary amount of chakra in order to do it, not just trying to assume the quantity. The second time, he still couldn't do it completely, but the energy ball did appear on his hand. The third time he completed the ball of energy completely and without the need for clones. On the third and final day of chakra control practice, the third and final book consisted on high jiaon and level chakra control and medical chakra control. He figured that he would be satisfied of having as much chakra control as a high level jiaonin, so he concentrated on the first part of the book. Safe to say that the third day was the hardest of all so far, because Naruto was having trouble to understand how effective was a high level jiaonin's chakra control. The book seems to show two theories. One that the amount of chakra control is directly linked to the amount of chakra that a ninja has and the second is the effectiveness of the ninja's chakra control. If Naruto were to base on the first theory, he would be cage level, because of the excessive amount of chakra he have combined with Kyuubi's chakra. But since Naruto, because of his battle with Orochimaru, decided not to use the demon's chakra again, just his own, which by far passed Kakashi's. So, he decided to train according to the second theory. The book, after the theories, was divided in two parts, explaining the first and second theory, from history to practice. When Naruto reached the end of the book, he was marveled at all the information he gasped from. To believe that chakra control had so much information, I always thought that it was a simple thing that everyone could learn in a simple way. I must remember to thank Shikamaru for the books that suggested. Naruto came to realize that out of the rookie nine, they were few he could actually be fond of. Shikamaru was one of them and possibly Neiji, but he was not a part of the rookie nine, since he is a year older than Naruto. When he reached for the last exercise of the book, he noticed that the completion consisted of performing 10 cage bunshines and engage in a fight with all of them at the same time for a period of one hour and a half. Oh. One hour and a half. That's even possible? Dash questioned Naruto. Remembering his training with Jiraiya, longer he ever reached was one hour and with five shadow clones. It was beginning to get dark outside, and he knew that if he wanted to conclude chakra control exercise, he would have to go outdoors. So he went to the place that, other than Kakashi and the third Hokage, no one knew of, so he could get some privacy. Naruto went to the Hokage mountain, and performed the necessary hand seals, screaming with such joy, Cage Bunshine no Jutsu. All of a sudden ten Naruto clones appeared from nowhere and turned facing Naruto. He realized that the exercise didn't only involve chakra control training but also taijutsu training so he chose to use the weights he used when training with Jiraiya. Then, Naruto turned to see his ten clones smiling at him like they already knew what they were to do. Naruto for his part was looking at each of them studying each of their reactions and surprisingly to say that even though they were clones, they were some of them that were smiling, while the rest of them were like the new Naruto, looking at the original with determined face. Okay, clones, you know what to do. Come at me and fight. Let's rock!" said all the clones screaming together as they charged against the real Naruto. 
Meanwhile around the Hokage Monument Neji was doing patrol duty near that area, and with his Byakugan, he spotted eleven Narutos on top of the Hokage Mountain and gasped in surprise. He's actually trying that exercise. I've never seen anyone actually able to complete the exercise, let alone go even further. Actually, Shikamaru was partnering with Neji for patrol duty and laughed at Neji's surprised expression and said, You know I also wasn't sure he could do it when I suggested that book for him. You what? Yeah, me and Naruto formulated his train schedule for two weeks. Oh, I see he's not the same as before, Neji. That's a fact. I'm in fact worried that he can be stronger than I am. I think he will be stronger than anyone in this village. He actually has affinity with wind and water jutsus, which already prove that he can become at least Jounin. If he manages to control the fire element, he will be unstoppable. I better train harder. He won't beat me ever again. Shikamaru could only laugh about it. Even if Naruto changed his personality, he still could make everyone inspired to do their best. Hell, even I suffer a burst of excitement, when I look at him, so troublesome dash thought Shikamaru. Back with Naruto half an hour has passed since the beginning of the fight and not a single sweat appeared in his face. He was feeling more alive than ever, being able to anticipate every move the clones charge at him and attacking as well. Since the main training was about chakra control, his clones would take the attack but did not evaporate, since Naruto was channeling chakra as a way of using the cage bunshine technique. The exercise consisted on a constant channeling of chakra in order to keep the bunshines for disappearing after contact. After the time limit for the exercise approached, Naruto signed for every clone to stop at his tracks and then release the technique. He was glad that he managed to complete a high Jounin level exercise and had to admit that he was a little tired. After all, he just trained equivalent to 10 Shinobis, since the clone's memory went to him after disappearing. Remembering Tashikamaru's suggestion, Naruto went straight to bed and fell asleep soon after. The first part of the training was complete and now was time for elemental jutsu training. On the next day on the next day, Tsunade was looking at the report on guard duty from Neji and Shikamaru over and over again. She didn't believe that Naruto would be so caught up on his training that he would consider that exercise. The fact that he succeeded it was a feat itself. Tsunade just couldn't wait for the results of Naruto's training so she requested Neji and Shikamaru's presence immediately at her office. You called us, Hokage-sama? Prompted Neji first. Yes, I did. I've seen your report on yesterday's guard duty and noticed that you guys spotted Naruto performing high-level Jounin chakra control exercise. Precisely, Hokage-sama, Shikamaru said slowly. It was tough just to read what was said at the report, but it was tougher to actually hear a Jounin and Chunin confirm the situation. She did know that Naruto took that book with the exercise, but she didn't know that he would try to perform that exercise let alone complete it. Right now what scared her the most, was that with all experience she had by seeing other Shinobis, she could not grasp the full extent of, Naruto's grow. For her, Naruto will be forever an unsolved puzzle that even Shikamaru wouldn't be able to solve. But that was a good thing, she thought. He has high probabilities of becoming Konoha's strongest ninja alive at some time in the future. Just by imagining what would Naruto show for her, she was biting her lips just bearing what he could accomplish. Never in her life, had she suffered from anticipation. Meanwhile, Neji and Shikamaru were staring at Tsunade when she was thinking the whole time. Ah. Excuse me, Tsunade-sama, did you call us here just to comment on the report or is it anything else? Said Shikamaru slightly bothered by the Hokage spacing out. What? Oh sorry about that, I was caught in my thoughts. Yes, Neji, I want you to report to me about Naruto's training, but only after the Chunin exams. Got it? You want me to spy on him? Any problem with that, Jounin? said Tsunade showing her scary face to Neji and not at all Hokage-sama. Wait, but why only after the Chunin exams? He mused. But why is she asking me to do that? Call it intuition, if you want, but I'm not sure if he's going to show his full power at the exam and I need to know what he can do, in order to know what to do to him. But Hokage-sama, it will be very easy for him to know I'm spying on him, said Neji remembering the event that Naruto was looking at him from a distance. Explain yourself Hayuga. With your Byakugan, you can see almost the entire village, just how can he sense you're watching him? Now this had even Shikamaru was interested, just how could Naruto see that Neji was spying on someone? Four days ago, I saw Naruto heading to the library jumping from roof to roof and I can tell you that the distance between him and me was almost two miles. He actually looked in my direction and keep looking at me with such apathy looks, just like he knew it was me. I believe that he could sense someone's chakra from a distance, Hokage-sama. Really? 
This must have been Jiraiya's doing. He must have taught Naruto some tracking skills. Damn him. Well, do your best, think of it as a stealth exercise. Hi, Hokage-sama. So, Shikamaru, do you have any information about the new Naruto, that you would like to share with us? Only that he has affinity with both few Uten and Suten techniques. Told Shikamaru, actually telling them a truth, but not the truth that he was responsible for setting his schedule for his training. That Kakashi already told me. Well both of you dismissed. Neji I'm counting on you. Hi, Hokage-sama, said both of them as they vanished afterwards. At Naruto's house back at Naruto's house, he was now caught studying the history of Fuuten Jutsus and its essence, so focused that he didn't sense Neji spying on him. Since Naruto didn't want to go out just yet, he ordered some pork ramen from the Chirakus by sending a small toad to the place. After 20 minutes, Ayame rang the bell of Naruto's apartment and delivered Naruto's order to him. Thank you Imazan. You're welcome, Naruto-kun. Ayame was blushing madly. She knew Naruto and at first she still saw the kid that always ate ramen, but this one was different, this was a man and he was handsome as hell. She blushed madly, while having perverted thoughts of the blonde shinobi. After that, she left his apartment and made a mental note to be the one delivering the next time just to see him again. At that time, Neji could have sworn that Naruto have seen him where he was hiding, but then decided that he couldn't notice me without Neji aware of it. Naruto, after finishing his meal continued reading his book but he couldn't help but wonder why Neji was spying on him. In fact, he knew that he couldn't train in a secret manner but to actually put a jown in to see what Naruto was doing was something Naruto didn't expect from Tsunade. Oh well. I think I've scared everyone with my new way of thinking concluded Naruto. Since elemental training was new to him, it took a little longer to understand than the chakra control exercises, but when the day became night, Naruto managed to cut a leaf in half, being this one of the exercises of the book. The book said that in order to have full control of Fuuten chakra, a ninja would have to slice water current. All he could think of was to practice it just outside Konoha where a waterfall was located. Actually, Naruto was ahead of his schedule since he only needed one day to fully learn Fuuten Chakra and now was doing Wind Chakra exercises. He figured that he could practice one more day of Taiyas too, in order to complete his schedule for the Chunin exams. On the next day, Neji was having trouble finding Naruto, since Naruto wasn't inside the city, actually he was training outside the walls of the hidden village. At the waterfall, Naruto stands on top of a rock in the middle of the waterfall, in order to start practicing the last and most difficult exercise he ever had to do. When he put his hands almost touching the water current he already was injecting a little wind chakra into the current, not quite cutting the water but he could see, after one hour of practice, a small gap caused by his chakra. After amazing four years trying, Naruto managed to slice completely the water current, now possessing full control over Fuuten chakra. Since he still had three hours left of practice, he made some hand signs and screamed once again, Cage Bunshine no Jutsu. This time, 20 Narutos showed up. This time, Neji sensed a presence outside Konoha and found their clones charging at Naruto, with all they got. Neji was furious with Naruto. Damn you Naruto! You were here the entire time, I was looking for you all day. Neji was now hidden behind a big oak tree to analyze Naruto's fight with his clones but something wasn't quite right about Naruto's chakra. When Neji used his Byakugan, he noticed the presence of Fuuten chakra floating throughout, Naruto's Tenkitsus. When did he manage to control his first affinity so quickly, and without me noticing? He must have mastered, while I was looking for him. Damn! Naruto did a section of defensive taijutsu with his clones, up to the point that he could properly defense and minimize the blow, only by using defensive taijutsu. After some time, the sky went dark and Naruto went straight home to rest, same as Neji. Since the next day was meant for Naruto to complete the waterfall slice exercise, he decided to take it easy and read the collection of Fuuten Jutsus from one of the scrolls he picked at the library. From the list of Fuuten techniques, Naruto managed to choose three techniques that would best fit his needs, Fuuten Suigata no Jutsu, one, technique similar to Hayuga's ultimate defense, but served as offense. To perform the technique, first the ninja have to make the following a sequence of hand signs, then the ninja needed to perform a spin as well as expel wind chakra from his body, in order to create a powerful hurricane. Fuuten Rasengan, this technique Naruto invented. It involved the real Rasengan with little Fuuten chakra in it, creating a ball of energy with a cutting ring around it. Very effective. Fuuten Daitapa no Jutsu, too, a break trough. It's when the ninja put the hand close to his mouth and blow a large gust of wind, leveling almost anything in its way. 
Naruto had three days to master all these techniques. So he used the rest of his free time, to meditate about the upcoming training period and went to sleep afterwards, not before noticing Neji's image, reflecting from the moonlight. When Naruto woke up, a huge burst of ecstasy ran through his body and he was shaking from all the excitement he was felling. Today, he is beginning to add new jutsus to his arsenal. After breakfast and a quick cold shower to wake up, he went straight to his favorite training ground, on top of the Hokage mountain. Hoping that Neji wouldn't spy on him, Naruto decided to get there at maximum speed to prevent his spy from following him, which actually worked, he did not sense Neji's presence anywhere. It was time for Naruto's first jutsu, the few Utensuigata no jutsu. Before he began, he looked at the book to memorize the hand seals sequence, which wasn't all that difficult at all. After a few tries, without channeling chakra, Naruto did perfectly the seals needed for the technique. Next, was his time to try performing the jutsu. This time, Naruto had some trouble, since his spin movement wasn't quite as accurate as the scroll said, slowing his training a bit. After having another peek at the scroll, he understood the movement. When he tried the next time, a big and strong hurricane appeared around Naruto, but something still wasn't right, since the hurricane wasn't going anywhere, so what Naruto needed to do was to focus more on Fuutan Chakra in order to control the hurricane and he was good to go. Meanwhile with Neji, Neji was searching for Naruto nearby, and he saw what appeared to be a big tornado coming towards him, obligating him to dodge it. But, because of the strong wind, Neji was thrown away and landed with his back on a tree, breaking some of his bones. Ah! So much pain! Screamed Neji. Neji had to crawl into Konoha Hospital and luckily for him, Tsunade was visiting the facilities and noticed that Neji was crying in pain at the reception. How can I help you, Nijizen? Asked the attendant. My back hurts like hell. I need a doctor ASAP what the fuck happened Neji? Tsunade appeared out of nothing, scaring Neji and increasing his pain a bit. Hurry, put him in a room for examination. I'll personally heal him. Certainly Tsunade-sama. After fixing Neji's broken ribs, Tsunade asked, Let me guess, Naruto? I think so. I was searching near the Hokage mountain for him, when a tornado appeared out of nothing and I had to dodge, but because of the strong wind, I went flying and hit my back pretty hard. It seems that Naruto is training few Uten techniques, but creating a tornado is something I've only read in books. I never saw before. Because of the extent of Neji's wound, he stayed at the hospital for the day and left the day after. Back with Naruto meanwhile, at the Hokage monument the entire ground was covered with holes, Naruto was caught sweating and laughing like a maniac. He was so thrilled that he forgot the date Appa Jutsu. Oh, I remember picking tree few Uten Jutsus. Ah there is the date Appa. Okay. So the book said to focus Fuutan Chakra in your lungs, put a hand close to the mouth and release all the air accumulated in your lungs, filled with chakra. Naruto managed to make quite a strong wind in his first try, but he knew he could make a stronger, if he concentrated better. It was the last day of Fuutan training, and he, after completing the Fuutan Rasengan and the Daitapa, Naruto let his brain work. What if I use a shadow clone to pump more Fuutan Chakra into the Rasengan? There is a high possibility that I can create a much more powerful Rasengan which can manage to cut the object more than one time. Not having second thoughts, Naruto created a single cage bunshine without the need for seals and channeled the few Uten Rasengan together with his clone, causing the transformation of a big shuriken with the energy ball in the middle. Naruto, because of the strong wind leaving his hands fought to remain standing as the giant wind shuriken is now circulating his hands. Now, time for a target. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.